Hey, this is Toe 2 Bravo, and uh, we're going to do a video today on our brand new 2021 Polaris 570 EPS. We took receipt of this yesterday. So for me, it is two days old and uh, probably has, give or take, maybe. 25 30 minutes of ride time on it so far so that's where we're at zero miles and we're gonna go through our little journey today so so we will do a complete drive-by we'll do some close-ups because what I want to do is I want to do a series of videos not only riding it and taking it to different locations and bringing you guys along as you're interested but also documenting uh, wear and tear on it as we move along and any problems we have we will be completely honest with this review so uh, if anybody's in the market you know this is not a skewed opinion I'm not sponsored by anybody we're a small channel we'll get in here and take some close-ups everything's stock on here nothing aftermarket Owned a Polaris in the past. So this will be my second Polaris ATV. I had the 450 in the past. And I gotta admit, there is quite a bit of uh, difference as far as power between this 570 and the 450 that I owned. You see everybody talking about the battery being moved. It's no longer there. Big open space there, you can see where it was. I'll show you guys where it's at here shortly. Radiator. Brush guard in the front. Rotate around to this side. And we'll pan back at. Hopefully that wasn't too shaky. You know, these one-man operations, right? Very nice display right there. Still need to set my clock, don't I? Half tank of fuel. Very nice. So we'll pan out and we'll come back and I'll show you some of the other features. All right. So they've got a, in addition to the rack up here to store things, you also have some storage on the inside. These are locked down with these rubber tie-downs, these rubber locks. So you pull those loose. I could see that being a, a potential issue at some time, maybe wearing at, dry rotting and having to rig something in their uh, aftermarket to compensate for that. But obviously we've not crossed that bridge. We pull this forward. You have two steel leads up here. I'll do a close up of those. You do have a rubber gasket that goes around this storage compartment. And the storage compartment also holds the battery. So we'll come take a look at that. All right. So you can see the rubber gasket here goes around in front of the battery and back around. You can see the battery location right there. Big improvement to the way that it used to be. These might be an area of concern. I don't know. You know, I've heard some people complain about them. There's not a lot of information out there on these as far as reviews. Uh, there's a lot of dealership stuff. I did find a few, but not, uh, not a ton. So I plan on tracking this stuff along the way and uh, sharing with you guys what my experiences are. To close this, bring it down. You've got your, you've got your rubber lock downs here. Just like that. Rotate it around. Pull it up. We're locked in. Now I've heard of uh, some people complaining about this rise right here. 
perhaps you can see it right here between the plastic and the uh, storage cover here. But what you got to keep in mind is the rubber gasket travels pretty much the shape of this right here. So as long as this piece is done hard, it's going to keep what's in here fairly dry and dust free. I don't think that really is a concern. I think some folks just didn't pay attention to where the gasket ran and, and that, if that makes sense. Plenty of storage space on here, like I said. Plenty of real estate on the front. Plenty of real estate on the back. I've heard people complain about all this being plastic. Um, I don't think that's really going to concern me. There's still plenty of points to run tie-downs and bungee straps, things of that nature. Looks like you can run some buckets here. So I don't think that'll be a problem. But again, we haven't driven it yet. We haven't taken it anywhere. So this is just initial assessments here. So overall, I'm very pleased. Um, the price is hard to beat on a Polaris compared to the competitors. Uh, these do run, the 570s do run uh, 44 horsepower. Uh, I know that the uh, Kodiaks, I think they run 48. Those are the 700s, so only a four horsepower difference. So here in Pennsylvania, I do have to have a helmet. So I've got a helmet on order. I'll share that with you guys too. Again, I am no uh, off-road ATV, uh, ATV accessory uh, professional. So I'll, we will learn along the way, but I'm definitely going to share everything with you. And that way, if someone else is looking to get into this, um, you know, maybe I can be a little, a little helpful uh, in my discoveries. Your oil access is right here. Got this little tab. Pull that out. Dipstick's right there. Put that back. Up front, as we all know, we collect a lot of stuff up here perhaps but we have a radiator cover protection area here pull that down pull it out easy access to the radiator to clean it off in the event that we've got some mud or dust or leaves or whatever caking in there we can go ahead and clean those off so we can prevent any overheating that just kind of slides in there and locks in i could see maybe taking some screen like from a window and supplementing that protection you're still going to get the airflow but you might keep some of the smaller things from actually making it through there that might be a decent mod to make something now uh, maybe we'll cross that bridge later something i would like to get in the future maybe after a couple rides with it is maybe some skid plates to protect those uh, a arms right there and those boots i feel that these Rubber boots could be compromised if uh, we get into some some bad stuff or some stuff that maybe uh, we can't avoid while we're out there. That skid plate, I've seen them where they come up and protect this whole area um, as long as the bottom there, the A-arm. So I think that's something we'd look into after we get a couple miles on this and see if it, it, it you know, we're going to, there's particular areas that we're kind of, there's some particular areas that I'm going to be riding in. So I need to get out there and, and see what's going on first, and I'm not going to waste the money if I don't need it. But if, but if I come across some obstacles out there that are going to uh, keep me from losing a boot or breaking an A-arm or something like that, uh, those skid plates, you know, I think they run maybe 150, 200 bucks, and I think that's a set for the front and the rear. We'll go around the rear here in a minute. I do think they would be beneficial here in the back also. More so in the front, I think, but they're sold as a set, so I definitely think that would be worthwhile. I plan on running the stock tires. I have no um, no plans to upgrade those. I wanna, I wanna see what we can get with the stock tires. You know, there's a lot of people that, uh, I see purchase these right off the bat and change the tires out. That seems like an incredible waste to me. I'm gonna get out there and run these tires, and I'm gonna run them the best I can. And uh, when they're worn out, then we'll, we'll cross that bridge. Something I've also seen people mod on these is they've taken this 
snorkel here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit of a weird uh, shade on that. There you go. I've seen people take this snorkel and run it up or run it out the back right there to keep water and debris from going into there. And that seems to make sense to me. That's something I might do also. I might just get a 90 degree piece of uh, the black PVC type pipe and run it up so the opening is up there. It might make more sense. Or maybe not not uh, facing totally up, but maybe off at an angle going that way. I think I might do that instead of uh, running the complete system out the back. But I need to go out and ride it. See what I'm gonna get into and do a little more research on that. Overall, I'm very pleased so far. I'm very excited to get out and start riding it. And GoPro. Uh, standpoints on this so we can film. Uh, I'd like to film both uh, driver's view and back to the driver so you can see uh, what I'm experiencing as I'm as I'm riding it and maybe even something underneath so we can see how the suspension is working as we do some of these obstacles. GoPros are waterproof so I don't see that that would be a problem as long as we don't rip one off huh? So very excited about getting out there and riding this. Very excited to take you guys along. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'm looking for some comments, some of the, some more experienced people's uh, experiences and opinions and things to, uh, that, that are smart to upgrade or things to look out for, things to pay attention to. But uh, this is my initial video. I did find out that if you are in the market for these, as of today, which is May 1st, uh, the all models are going up like three or four hundred dollars, I heard, uh, due to lack of materials or materials not being as, uh, as available as they were in the past. So, for myself, I kind of lucked out. Hopefully, the next video is um, one of me out there driving it, getting some real opinions on, on the performance of this beast. So, until I see that on the trails. Thanks for watching.